is my ticket out of this godforsaken continent. Blood diamonds have become a fixture in the media. Uncut diamonds? They were kind of dirty looking pebbles. I'm used to seeing diamonds shiny and in a box, you know. But diamonds aren't the only consumer good with potentially corrupt origins. Have you heard of blood cell phones or blood laptops? Some of the materials used in everyday electronics are mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where illegal taxes and trading help fund continued violence in the eastern part of the country. It might be easy to forego buying a brand new diamond, but most of us can't imagine life without our cell phones and computers. Hi, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. The Enough Project, an anti-genocide group, created this ad to suggest that all of our hands are dirty. A lot of this stuff comes all the way from the Congo, where it's been fueling the deadliest conflict in the world since World War II. After seeing this video, many eyes turned to electronics companies. A concerned consumer emailed CEO Steve Jobs to ask if Apple knows where its products come from. The exchange was published on Wired.com. Jobs replied that they require their suppliers to certify in writing that they use conflict-free minerals, but said there's no way for them to be sure. Nobody knows exactly how much of the conflict in Congo depends on the mineral trade. But we do know that some of these minerals end up in our devices. Tungsten is a material used to make cell phones vibrate. Tantalum is used to store electricity in almost everything from iPods to airplanes. Then there's tin, used as a solder in circuit boards. And finally, gold. There's at least a little gold in every electronic device used for its high conductivity in all kinds of connectors. Gold is particularly difficult to regulate. It's easy to smuggle and nearly impossible to trace. Since nobody's giving up electronics anytime soon, an increasing number of NGOs and governments are demanding a cleanup of the industry. The U.S., for its part, recently adopted a policy on conflict minerals as part of the financial reform bill. The new law gives electronics companies nine months to determine whether their materials come from Congo or surrounding countries and to publicly report on their efforts to determine the source. Critics of the policy fear that stigmatizing the entire industry might only serve to make a poor country even poorer. And rebel groups could turn to other industries, such as charcoal and cattle herding, to fund their activities and weapons. There are no easy answers to bringing stability to Congo. Most policy analysts agree that requiring transparency in the mineral trade is only one step in a long journey. But as human rights workers and lawmakers do their part, consumers can do theirs by letting companies know they don't want to contribute to the atrocities in Africa. This is Valerie Lipinski for Time Video.